This is the final lecture in Unit 5, um, and we're going to talk about public and private goods. One of the roles of government in a market economy is to provide public goods that would not otherwise be um, produced by private companies in the quantities that we need them to. So we're going to talk about that today. So public goods have two characteristics. They are not excludable meaning they're available to everyone and we can't prevent consumption if someone doesn't pay for them. And public goods are also non-rival, meaning one person's use does not diminish another person's use. So more than one person can use the good at the same time and we can't stop someone from using it if they don't pay for it. Uh, some examples of public goods are things like public parks, neighborhood lights, um, these are two great examples because um, we can't stop people from from you know enjoying the safety or benefiting from the safety of streetlights, even if they're not like a taxpayer in the area that doesn't pay for those goods. And you know more than one person can benefit from those lights at the same time. Or public parks like neighborhood parks. Um, I grew up living on Briardale Park in Fridley. There were lots of people that would come from other cities and come play in Briardale Park because it was a nice park. And, you know, they didn't pay anything to use the park. They didn't live in the city and pay taxes to maintain the park, but couldn't stop them from using the park. And lots of people could use the park at the same time. So these are two examples of public goods, and there are many others. And the deal is, with public goods, businesses do not have incentives to produce enough. So if left to the private market, we wouldn't have these things. We wouldn't have enough of these things um, for what's needed in society because they're not excludable. Businesses, private businesses don't have an incentive to produce things for people that aren't going to pay for them or that aren't forced to pay for them. And we call this issue the free rider problem. There's always going to be free riders with public goods. There's going to be people that don't contribute and they still benefit. And so the government has to step in and collect tax dollars from everybody to force everyone to contribute to pay for these public goods. Private goods, on the other hand, are just the opposite. They're excludable, they're only available to the buyer, and they're rival, meaning the same good cannot be experienced by more than one person at a time. All right, so only one person can use these at a time, and it can only be the buyer. So a couple examples of private goods would be things like cars, you know, if you buy a car, you're the only one that can use that car, you bought it, you know, not anybody can just get in your car and drive it, and we can't have, like, a bunch of people driving your car at the same time. And a haircut, because you pay for the haircut, you get the haircut, you know, five people at once can't experience the same haircut on the same head, so that's definitely a private good. With private goods, businesses do have incentives to produce enough because they're excludable. And they can make sure that the only people who are going to get these goods are the ones who are paying for them. Alright, we have two other categories to know about here. Common resources. Common resources have a combination of excludability and um, whether they're rival or non-rival. So, common resources are non-excludable, but they are rival. Meaning, you cannot stop someone from consuming the good, but more consumption from, by one person means less of the good left over for, for someone else. Um, and left to the market, common resources suffer from overuse. And this the, the economic technical term for this is tragedy of the commons. If the government doesn't step in and regulate and make rules about usage for some of these common resources, um, they will be depleted. So things like clean air, the environment, um, this is why we have hunting laws, fishing limits, things like that, to try to prevent overuse of things um, that are out in the world that anybody can get at and, and, and consume. Okay, and then the final category is artificially scarce goods. And the combination to look for here is they're non-rival, but they are excludable. Okay, so this would be, this would mean <clears throat> that the marginal cost of supplying an additional unit of the good is zero. It doesn't cost any more to, to produce more of this. And the efficient price should be zero, so production will be inefficiently low. Uh, let me give you an example of artificially scarce goods. Computer software, because 
it costs maybe millions of dollars to produce the first the first um, unit of the computer software but once it's developed it costs the company virtually nothing to produce additional copies of the software and sell them especially if they're downloads you know it virtually could cost the company nothing to produce another unit of the good or movies that you rent online like if you have a subscription to Netflix um, you have to pay to get to sign into Netflix you have to have an account but once you've signed on you can watch the same movie that someone else is watching just because you're watching it doesn't mean that someone else can't watch it at the same time so those are our four categories of goods we have public private common resources and artificially scarce goods and what you need to know is understand the characteristics of each so you should be able to um, be given a good or a service and decide what category it would fit into and then also understand the role of government um, is going to differ depending on the type of goods that are being regulated so um, public goods are provided by the government because of you know the free rider problem the government has to step in since businesses don't have incentive to produce those things for markets on their own and then also with common resources the government is going to step in and regulate to, to prevent overuse in the tragedy of the commons. But the government doesn't typically get too involved in markets for private goods. I mean, there are some laws to protect consumers from, you know, faulty products and, and things like that. So there are certain safety regulations out there, but <clears throat> they don't get extremely involved typically. And artificially scarce goods is another area where the government be stays less involved. All right, and that's it. We're done with Unit 5. Yay.